Hello, this is the AI Lab. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Žiga Turk, professor at the University of Ljubljana, Slovenia, and a member of the Academic Council of the Wilfrid Martin Center for European Studies. Dr. Turk was Minister for Growth as well as Minister of Education, Science, Culture and Sports in the Government of Slovenia and Secretary General of the Felipe González Reflection Group on the Future of Europe. As an academic, author, and public speaker, he studies communication, internet science, and scenarios of future global developments, particularly the role of technology and innovation. The reason? A recent Martin Center blog post by Giga, in which he provocatively states that Brussels is about to protect citizens from intelligence, referring to the latest AI Act developments. Let's hear what Giga has to say. So Giga, in your blog post, you argue that the new regulations proposed by Brussels could significantly um, hinder the development of the European high-tech industry, especially in the field of artificial intelligence or what we call AI. So could you elaborate on why you consider that the current approach to AI regulation focuses too much on limiting potential risks rather than fostering innovation and, and freedom of expression. Um, and, and do you have any specific examples in mind? Um, and also, I think, as an ex-minister uh, uh, and government official, how do you propose governments balance uh, the need for security and privacy with uh, technological innovation? Well, first of all, one must be clear that artificial intelligence is a general generic technology, what it does is it can discover patterns and it can continue patterns. And the discovery of patterns is what rational humans do. Creating, creating patterns is what creative humans do. And science, uh, that is discovering patterns should be free and creativity expression should be free. What regulating something as generic as AI creates is a kind of a I would say almost a minefield for all kinds of possible interpretations, all kinds of possible court battles. It will chill down the whole ecosystem. People will be hesitant. Investors would be hesitant. Do I want to invest in something here in Europe, which is so, in fact, tightly regulated? I think the mistake is to try to regulate technology. It is behaviors that have to be regulated. You were asking, you know, how to kind of put together the, the need for security and privacy. And the answer is uh, regulate behaviors, don't regulate the possibilities of technology. For example, if you want preventive policing, that is uh, in policing, you would um, discover some patterns that in some areas of the city or some people would be more likely to commit a crime. Now, if this is prohibited, it should be prohibited if you do it using Excel or if you use it artificial intelligence to discover these patterns, or you just have an old policeman with a good nose of who and where is likely to commit a crime. Similarly, if, for example, deep fakes are a problem, I don't think it makes a difference whether you make a fake with Photoshop or you let AI do it. If fakes need to be um, labeled, they should be labeled regardless of the technology. Yeah, I, I, I think um, it's funny that you talk about the deep fakes and, and Photoshop. It's one of the remarks I made myself hearing that some video platforms will ask creators to label um, uh, footage if it's been AI generated. And I thought uh, of my youth and how um, there was talk about magazines having to warn when uh, models were being photoshopped so that young people did not have impossible standards. I guess that didn't happen back then. Let's see about AI. Um, looking, looking further at that idea of general um, technology, AI as a general technology that should not be regulated as such, that's a central theme in your post. Uh, and and you, real, you use some really powerful analogies to make your point. Um, from that perspective, you suggest that instead of specific AI regulations, uh, laws should be technologically neutral, which at the end of the day has always been a core concept, um, at least in the early ages, 
uh, of legislation. Could you expand on what this would mean in practice? Yeah, um, speaking a little bit theoretically, uh, human societies are complex. And you, if you introduce something dramatically new into something complex, you get what is called emergent behavior. So things happen that you cannot foresee uh, in advance. And we had such, such disruptive innovations in the past, like printed press, like the internet. And one can just be, uh, one can just admire how reasonable the thinkers and the politicians of the Enlightenment era were, because they were not going, oh, this is now printed press. It will create all kinds of unacceptable risks. We have to regulate ex ante what people would be able to do or not. Instead, they created this whole body of legislation on the freedom of expression. And the only thing that was deemed kind of unacceptable risk was, was something like uh, owning, owing uh, typewriters in the Soviet Union. Similarly with the internet, um, in the early days, there too were ambitions to regulate it one way or the other. What happened in the United States was they created regulation that actually freed internet companies from some potential dangers of hosting user content on their platforms, which created this whole internet industry and this whole creativity around platforms. People started to, to be creative in all kinds of way and engaging it with each other in all kinds of way because there was a kind of guaranteed freedom. There was not a minefield uh, of regulations there. And I think it would be wrong to be worried just about with respect to this reg regulation, just about the AI industry in Europe or the AI startups. Yes, it will create, it will have a chilling effect on them. The politicians will try to kind of calm them down by giving them some extra money and some new project, etc. But I think the even bigger danger is how or what kind of chilling effect this would have for European industries, for persons, uh, uh, for people and for businesses in Europe who will not have access to the latest and greatest AI tools, even if they are made outside of Europe. This is happening already. Some AI tools are coming to European customers uh, with a delay or not at all. And this puts the whole European economy, its citizens, its sciences, scientists um, at a disadvantage with their competition. Um, yeah, so if if I summarize and, and looking back at your blog post, um, let's not look at AI as a, a singular phenomenon, but let's look at it as something that enables behaviors yes. um, and enables innovation, creativity, and also enables bad behaviors. But let's look at the behavioral side of it, not the technology, as, as was aptly done when the internet came out. Uh, Let's protect the fundamentals. I think that's that's an important message, as you said, with the internet. It was freedom of speech was was at the core and trying to protect that. And let's not forget it. And let's not forget that we don't want Europe to miss on opportunities because people are fearful of using AI, basically. Not just AI companies, but companies and society at large. Exactly. And if politicians want to stay or to be ahead of the curve of technological development, if they will go about regulating every new technology that it appears, appears, they would always be behind the curve. What they should focus on is regulate, you know, general behaviors. This and this should not be done. This and this should not be done by governments. This and this are governments allowed to do. And this and this are the businesses and private citizens prohibited to do, regardless of the technology that is being used. I think this is the only way to, to create a kind of stable environment, which leaves technological development as such, innovation as such, entirely free uh, for, for quick development, for rapid, rapid catching up with the rest of the world. Giga, I hope that uh, policymakers will uh, listen to you. Um, we know that the AI Act is pretty much closed and done at this stage, but there will be more because, you know, when there's a buzzword in Brussels, everyone uses it and everyone wants to regulate it. 
Um, and thank you so much for your contributions. And let's hope that the AI office that is in the makings uh, will consult people like you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.